Maximo Manage provides extensive meter management functionality to monitor the health and condition of your assets. This functionality includes creating meters, applying meters to assets or locations, entering individual meter readings in desktop or mobile applications, or via automated import processes in Maximo. In today's video brought to you by Maven Asset Management, we'll focus on a top-level understanding of meter types and their individual attributes. Let's start by reviewing the three types of meters available in Maximo. The three meter types are continuous, gauge, and characteristic. Continuous meters count. Examples of these include runtime and odometers, and they increase in value over time. Continuous meters are often used in PM or preventative maintenance records to trigger PM work based on values, meter values like every 10,000 miles. Gauge meters fluctuate, things like temperature, pressure, or vibration. And what's unique about a gauge meter is they're often used in condition monitoring where we can set upper and lower warning and action limits based on a meter gauge value. And lastly, characteristic meters are observed. These are things like oil color or maybe an odor, something that we cannot explicitly measure. What's unique about a characteristic meter is that we can set up a domain in Maximo for the user to select from a predefined list of meter values. But now let's explore these in a little bit more detail and look at unique characteristics of each of the three meter types. First is our continuous meters. When we set up a continuous meter, we have to define the reading type as shown here in the meter application. And there's two values that are available, the actual, which is the actual value. So if this is runtime hours, this is 10,000 hours. Or if it's a delta, delta is the difference from the last reading. So it's gonna be a value less than 10,000, maybe it's 50, 100, 250, whatever that value might be. So that's what's a little unique here when you look at setting up our continuous meters. The second item that is unique about a continuous meters is the average calculations. When you apply a continuous meter to an asset or a location, you'll see a dialogue similar to what you see here, and you're gonna be prompt a required field for the average cal calculation method. And this is the domain value of the four values that are available. I've listed how the different calculations apply, the all, the static, sliding days, sliding readings, et cetera, but it's kind of difficult to explain how these calculations come into play. So what I'd like to highlight is an example that I've done here in our demo system. And basically I created four different run hour meters. I gave them different names corresponding to the average calculation values of all sliding days, sliding reading static, and then applied them to a single asset. I then entered a number of different run hours and dates, but applied the same run hours and date to each one of those meter values. And then as you navigate, you can see how the different average units per day are calculated. It's a great test to understand the different impacts of these average calculations, but also to increase your understanding of how the meter readings come into play with continuous meters. The third unique attribute about a continuous meter is you can edit its meter reading. Let's describe this functionality with a use case. Imagine I'm an inspector or field technician and I enter a meter reading for an asset, a continuous meter, but I keyed it in incorrectly. I meant to input 100, but I keyed in 1000. Well, because this value has such a significant impact on the overall continuous value of that meter, Maximo provides the opportunity to edit that meter reading value in the asset or location application via the manage meter reading history. But notice this is again only available for a continuous meter. If you enter the incorrect value for a gauge or a characteristic meter, you do not have the ability to correct that value from the Maximo UI. Let's talk a little bit about our gauge meters. Again, 
These are the ones that fluctuate like temperature or pressure. And when I often think of a gauge meter, I think of condition monitoring. There's a mock-up of a screenshot shown here on the bottom. And basically what this is showing is pressure readings over time as indicated by these black boxes. But notice that we're seeing uh, meter readings come in indicating much higher pressure. And with condition monitoring, we can trigger a maximo inspection or a maximo work order to automatically be triggered if we reach those upper or lower action limits, again, defined in maximo condition monitoring. So think of gauge meters and fluctuating and condition monitoring. Lastly, our characteristic meters. These are the ones that are observed. We observe them via visualization, maybe the oil color. That's often the most common use case for a characteristic meter with a vehicle. We look at the oil color, it's clear or it's dark brown, whatever the, it, the value is. But how do we define what those characteristic values are? They're set up in a domain. Excuse me, here's the domain for an oil color in Maximo, and you can see that the inspector or the technician has the ability to select from these values. And you can set up as many different domains for all the different characteristic meters that you may have in your organization. But now let's go over to Maximo and look at this functionality. I'm signed into Maximo and I've accessed the meters application. This is that first step where we have to define what our meters are before we can associate them to an asset or location. I have the values sorted by the three different types, characteristic, continuous, and gauge. Let's open up one of these. Here's the oil color. And what you're gonna see right away is it's associated to a domain. And that's gonna, again, give the user a set of values that they can select from for the oil colors. If I come back to the, oops, let me click back to my list view. Let's open up one of our pressure ones, um, not pressure, excuse me. Let's open up our continuous ones. These are the values that I input to really kind of explore the continuous meter readings in more, more depth, especially as we look at that average calculation. So I open up this one here. This is our run hours. We're going to look at the sliding day, and you'll see that in just a minute. And I've defined it as the actual or delta. In this case, I said it was the delta type. That's going to be really important as we come into play in calculating those values. So again, meters, that's where you're going to set them up. But now let's head on over to assets. And let me bring up a value that I've created, which is a meter. And this is just a test asset that I have so I can experiment with the meter values. As you look here, you can see right away, I have those four run hours meters. I have each one of them applied to this individual asset and we put the same values on. But also let me show you how easy it is to add another meter. I can just come down here. Let's make this sequence five. Let's access a, well, let's grab the oil, right? I think we had that oil one, our characteristic. Let's add him on over there, and I'm going to save my records. Now, if I want to enter a value, I could do this in many different ways in Maximo. I'm going to just enter a value here. Let's say what our oil color is. Um, what's my new reading? Again, that's pulling from the, the domain that's associated with it. I'm going to say it's clear. And I could put any remarks there, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that. And then I could continue to enter other meter readings. But again, there's so many ways to enter meter readings in Maximo, whether you're doing it from the desktop, a mobile application, or an automated, automated import. Before I close that dialog, actually, I already closed it. Let me bring it back up. Show you this one that's really important is the manage meter reader history. Notice that you have two tabs, one here for continuous meter and our characteristic. So here's the oil color that we just input. But notice I don't have the ability to change it through the UI. That's the value. But in my continuous meter readings, if I come down here and open up one of these values, I can modify it. So maybe I entered 77, but the value is actually 80. I can go ahead and edit the value again for my characteristic meters. I said that incorrectly. I can edit the value for my continuous meters. I always get continuous and characteristic. They both are those um, long words that start with a C. But again, you can edit a continuous meter. You cannot edit a gauge or characteristic. 
The other thing I was excited to show you about down here under meters is the, the values, how they're calculated differently. And let's open up the run hours sliding day to show this. As I calculate or as I navigate back down here, see the average calculation method? These are the four options that I had. In this case, I set it up for sliding days. Here's my window. What is the number of days that I want that to be calculated as? And you can see my average unit per day. But notice as I change this value, maybe I want to go, whoops, let's try this again. Change it to seven. Whoops, got to reload there. Sorry about that. Try that again. Let's go ahead. You can tell that this is a live demo. Save that value. Now it goes up to 20. Change that again. And the value continuously changes. I actually think that to understand the calculations, you really should try to set up the different meters and see how the, the values are impacted when you go ahead and do that. So again, if I put this in for the last five readings, it's going from 65.63 to 65.28. Not a lot of change there, but I actually don't have a lot of meter readings for this particular asset. So what I would really highlight as you explore the meter functionality in Maximo is go ahead, set up those meter values, assign them to assets, assign them to locations, enter those values, maybe set up a condition monitoring point for a gauge meter and understand how these all come together in helping you monitor your asset health and condition. Thank you so much for your time today as we've explored this functionality.